The Revenant by T.J. Hostetter. It walks among us, hunting them. This thing, I do not know what to make of it. I cannot tell if knowing that it exists sets my mind at ease, or if I should be disturbed beyond sanity. One thing I am certain of is that I have dispelled all doubt from my mind, and am convinced that these things are out there, fighting their unseen war. I only wish I could truly understand what its intentions were. Is it here to protect, or simply to destroy? Or perhaps, I should say, to devour them? In my line of work, I am no stranger to the sight of carnage. I have witnessed the brutality of man at some of its worst. When I received the call about the murder, and upon my arrival, it was all the same to me. But the victim this time was different. The body was found in the ditch of a driveway leading to the woods, and it was horribly mutilated, to such an extreme that some officers believed it was the work of starving wolves and not a human. There was one thing strange about that day. As the corpse was being ready for transport, I thought I spied a strange figure in the distant woods. I could only make out an outline, but it looked as if it was a man in black robes. I had half a mind to pursue the figure, but I looked away for a moment to address an officer, and once I checked again, this figure was gone. I told myself that it was but a mind trick as it was rather early in the morning and I hadn't even eaten yet that day. The body was transported, and it was only thanks to dental records that we were able to identify it. The victim was a hiker that had disappeared two days prior to the event. After spending two more days in the morgue, we learned that the mutilations were caused by something else, as they didn't match any description of any known predator in the woods. Needless to say, I was determined to find out what happened, as such evil would have to be found and brought to justice. The victim was a man by the name of Jonathan Oban, a gardener at the local greenhouse. And this is when things got rather difficult. Oban was rather antisocial, according to his roommate, and didn't have any enemies. Even still, everyone I deemed a possible suspect at first had valid alibis. I wondered if this was the work of a serial killer until I received a strange visit. My visitor was a Miss Freddy Helga, a rather upbeat woman, and her profession was something I can only describe as cryptozoology. She told me that news of the murder had traveled through the media, and after she heard, she had a peculiar theory. She started by showing me pictures of previous murders that, strangely enough, were very similar to the one of Oben's. They were each spread out all over the region of this country, so I first believed that perhaps it was a traveling murderer. However, Helga quickly hinted at something else. She laid before me a picture, which was labeled with the words, The Tramp. It was like one of those photos that every cryptozoologist has, only this one wasn't of Bigfoot or Loch Ness. This was something different. The creature in the photo, from how I would describe it, looked like a scarecrow. Its skin was brown, looking almost like rotting wood. Its body tall and slender. Its feet and hands looked almost like tree roots, and it had what looked like a burlap sack over its head. Her claim was that this creature, the tramp, was some kind of monster that wandered the region, killing and feeding on humans. Her words were outrageous, and I would have sooner believed that this tramp was actually a serial killer in a mask. I expressed my doubts rather bluntly. After all, I wasn't about to damage the reputation I had, which was already fragile enough being the only female detective in the force. She responded with another photo. Several, actually. This is where my attention was caught, as the pictures before me were each of what looked like a humanoid figure in black gothic robes that had straps tied around his body and what uh, the robes could not cover, it had boots and gloves. As for his head, it had a pointed hood and some of the pictures blanked out his face, but a few seemed to show that he wore a mask of some kind. Helga then explained to me that this figure 
was always seen shortly after any tramp sightings, as well as many other cryptids. I was hesitant to ask for the name of the figure, but my experience back when we first found the body had me thinking, and I wanted to know more about him because of that. Helga told me that she referred to him as the Revenant. Helga went on to explain her own personal theories about this figure. The name Revenant came from an eyewitness who claimed that he saw the figure killing something in the woods. The witness got close enough and heard the words, It brought me back to life for me to make them die. It was this witness, as well as the fact that it was seen whenever a cryptid was seen, that led Helga to believe that this revenant was some kind of hunter, someone or something that was hunting these cryptids and killing them. After she got done explaining this all to me, I came to my senses and realized just how absurd it all sounded. An undead hunting monsters. Preposterous. I eventually let Helga leave so I could return to my investigation the way it was meant to be. Unfortunately, after a week, the case went totally cold, and a week later there was another murder. The carnage was exactly the same as before, and while the body was found on a different side of town, the location was still close to the more wooded area. I shouldn't be surprised as to what happened next, for after they loaded up the body, I once again saw the strange hooded figure, or should I say, the revenant, in the distant woods. This time, I actually did follow him, as I was determined to get some answers. However, he disappeared as fast as he arrived, and I stood there in the woods with nothing. I was about to turn around and leave, before I suddenly felt something sharp push against my back. It did not break the skin, but I knew that a simple push would lunge whatever it was into my spine. I could then hear the strange sound of chains clinking together, which was followed by a metal hook wrapping around my neck. I stood there motionless. Time seemed to slow down for a moment, until I felt it whispering in my ear. Its voice was human, except it had a strange, sinister tone to it. You do not want this. Do not pursue me. The very breath from his mouth stung at my flesh, but just as I was about to ask questions, the hook was retracted, and whatever was standing behind me was gone. I repeated my investigation tactics for this new victim, Miss Brenda Ways, and once again the case went cold. The only lead I had was the Revenant, and he was nothing but an urban legend. I don't know if it was desperation or if I was just going insane, but after a week of nothing, I decided to make my way to the woods. Based on what our experts believed the time of the death was, I figured I'd head out at sunset, bringing my late father's old hunting rifle for safety. When the sun was still up, the woods had a rather beautiful scenery to them, and I would have enjoyed the walk if the circumstances were different. However, I was determined to catch this killer and put an end to the carnage, or so I told myself. As night fell, the woods became ominous. I could feel the dozens, maybe hundreds of unseen eyes watching me. These were the eyes of the many creatures of the night, all of which were not welcoming to an outsider like myself. It was in that moment of realization that I did not belong here. This was the place where these creatures of the night roam. It is not a place for mankind. This is a different world, and we do not belong here. That's when I heard it, the horrible snarling with the slight hiss to it. Once I turned and looked upon where the sound was coming from, I saw it, the tramp. The very thing I doubted if it existed was standing before me, towering over me with its nightmarish form. By the time I finally got over the shock of such a hideous creature, the monster was coming towards me. I responded by unloading the bullets from both my rifle and my pistol, not missing a single shot. 
Each bullet went right through its body, doing nothing to halt its approach. Quickly, I was out of ammo, and the horror was upon me. From its abdomen spawned horrible, sharp appendages that reached out, seizing me by my torso and lifting me up to eye level with it. I had the misfortune of getting to witness the creature taking off its burlap sack and revealing its head, which I can't even begin to describe, nor do I wish to. Such a face was so hideous that my blood froze and I couldn't move or even scream. I believe it held me for a period of time, making terrible sounds that stung at my ears before it reached out with its long skeletal hand. It slowly ran its claw down my cheek, drawing blood, but I was so frozen by the horror I couldn't even feel the pain or the blood running down my face. What finally forced me back to my senses was something I never expected, as something tore into the appendages of the tramp. Its blood splattered on my face, and it dropped me. I looked to see that there appeared to be something I could only describe as tentacles that looked like chains with sharp hooks on the ends, had pierced the tramp's abdomen and its appendages. The tramp was tugged away from me, and I saw it. It was the Revenant, and I could see him in great detail. His robes were more tactical than in the photos, and I could see his mask, which looked like it was made of metal, mostly smooth, but the upper left half looked like it was made of junk. However, what was truly horrifying about the Revenant was the blood-red glow of his snake-like eyes and I soon realized that the chain-like tentacles were coming from his back. What followed was the Revenant and the Tramp engaged in combat of extreme brutality and savagery. Once the carnage was over, the Revenant stood over the Tramp's body, and I witnessed the Revenant absorbing the flesh and blood of the Tramp, leaving only bones behind, which soon were reduced to dust, leaving nothing of the horrible nightmare. As the Revenant finished absorbing the monster into his body, he gave off sounds of agony, as if devouring such a monster caused him great pain, and I caught the strange sight of the mask retracting from his face. For a brief moment, the Revenant looked more human. His face was that of a common man's, and his eyes were light brown. He looked like any man. Perhaps he was human at one point. I wondered what had happened to him. Then he looked upon me, and his mask grew back. Or maybe I should say that his face was the mask itself. He drew close to me, looking me in the eye, staring into my soul. He had warned me not to pursue him. I was certain he was going to kill me. I laid there, contemplating all the ways this creature could end me. Would he rip me apart with his tentacles? Would he devour me like the tramp? Or would he display another form of his powers upon me? I then felt the cold steel of one of his hooks on my face. But the hook did not tear my flesh. I felt the cut on my face heal, as if nothing had happened. The revenant retracted his tentacles into his back, and he left me vanishing almost like a specter into the woods. I didn't tell my superiors about what happened, as I knew they wouldn't believe me. I had no proof, as the tramps' corpse was nothing but dust in the wind. No pictures, no videos, nothing. There were no more killings, and I would say that justice was served for the victims. But with nothing to show, I spent the next month following false leads and purposefully found nothing until something else came along and put the case to rest. It's still technically open, but no one touches it. There's no reason to believe that they will find out what happened. I don't know how I feel about what I've seen. I do not know if I should take comfort that the Revenant killed such a monster and left me alive or if I should be terrified that such creatures exist in the first place. Is this revenant a guardian 
or a destroyer who just so happens to hunt other creatures of destruction. I have too many questions and no answers. I then decided to turn back to Miss Helga. I felt silly at first doing so, and once I explained everything to her, I felt like she doubted everything. I doubted it all myself as I spoke. But she was interested, and she said she wanted to learn more. It may be a dangerous enterprise, but I wanted to help her, because I wanted to learn more about this revenant. Perhaps chasing him will be my death, or my path to insanity. Or maybe, just maybe, there is something else to him. Perhaps, maybe, there is an element of humanity to him after all.